I've used snaps a bunch of times in the past, but while I was using them, over time I developed some issues with them and eventually stopped using them and nowadays I don't use them whatsoever. But for a lot of people out there, whenever you mention snaps in any sort of positive light, Basically, they just snap. They don't think anybody should use snaps, they think they're terrible, and think basically they shouldn't exist. And as someone who is just learning about snaps, or maybe you're new to Linux, it's pretty hard to understand why someone seems to irrationally hate some random packaging system. So today we're going to go over some of the reasons why people don't like snaps, and in some cases think you shouldn't use them. These reasons aren't to say that you shouldn't be using snaps and they're inherently bad. And it's also not to say that every single one of these reasons is valid to every single person. Depending on your position, some of these reasons might actually be benefits. Also, we're going to be focusing on the desktop use case. I know that snaps do have use cases in the IoT and server space, but that's a completely separate discussion. So on Ubuntu, the main distro for snaps some people see snaps as being forced onto users, basically as a silent migration where previously users were using the dev package and then over time it just got replaced with a snap and they weren't really told about it. Now, generally what happens, especially with something like Firefox, there is a big announcement this is happening and everybody who's paying attention knows very well in advance. But a lot of users out there don't really pay attention to the news for all of the projects they're using, and it can seem like it's just come out of nowhere. Also, snaps will automatically update, where in some cases, this leads to an application restart. Now, from my understanding, this can be deferred, so it can happen later, but I don't believe automatic updates can be fully disabled without doing something like blocking the snap store in your host file or disconnecting from the internet. There are advantages. Many users are very lazy about updating, and if you don't force them to update, they'll update once every six months, once every year, whenever they remember to do so. So this keeps them more protected, but it does take away some level of user choice. And if the update isn't written properly, it can leave you with a broken application. Also, there's the problem with the Snap Store itself, where it's proprietary and there's only one store. Now, when people say the Snap Store is proprietary, they don't mean the Snap Store application. They don't mean SnapD. They don't mean the Snapcraft website. All of this stuff is open source. You can go and see the source code right now. What they mean is the place that is actually hosting the snaps that is proprietary. This is intertwined with Canonical's infrastructure, and they've explicitly said this is not open source. Also, the path to the Snap Store in SnapD is hard coded, so it's not as easy as changing a config file and then connecting to a different store. But the store itself is effectively just an HTTP server, and there are open source implementations that can be used. So if someone really wanted to, they could go and make their own snap store and distribute whatever applications they want, even go and copy everything from the main snap store and just have it distributed from a separate location. Now, Canonical didn't just make one store for no reason whatsoever. The reason why they did so is to eliminate the problem they already made while making PPAs, personal package archives, where if you want some random third-party application, you need to add an extra repo, and then an extra repo, and an extra repo, and over time it gets harder and harder to manage because you have all these extra repos that you don't remember why you added. All Canonical needs to do to make this problem go away is make the store path configurable. Even if their store stays proprietary, if the option to use something else does exist, even if no other stores exist, people will stop mentioning it. And compared to native packages, whether that's a Deb or a Taji Z or anything else out there, the first time you launch a snap, it's always going to be a slower launch. Now, after that first launch, it's usually going to be cached, and further launches are generally going to be fine. But because you have this containerized solution, first launch is always going to be a problem. It's not just a problem with snaps, though. This happens with app images. This happens with flat packs. It's just the nature of it being containerized. Snaps did alleviate some of these issues when they migrated from XZ compression over to LZO compression, 
but there might be some applications which haven't been updated in quite a while, which are still using that older compression system. But for the vast majority of applications, at least that aspect is going to be quicker. Another problem is unlike flat packs and app images, snaps don't support per user installation. Now for a regular individual system, this isn't really that big of a deal. You're the only person on the system. Maybe you have a root account, but the root account can use everything on your account anyway, so that doesn't really matter. But if you're using a system where it's going to have multiple people, let's say it's a family system, or you're deploying a system that multiple people are going to be connecting to, there are some cases we want to have one application available for one user, but not for another. And due to Snaps being a self-contained packaging solution where you have the application and all of its dependencies, this leads to the packages being fairly large, which for some people with slower connections might be a pretty big deal. Now this isn't just the case with Snaps. App images do the exact same thing as well. It's sort of the whole point of using one of these solutions. For the dedicated Snap lovers, there are workarounds you can take, but most people out there are probably just going to say, you know what, I'm just going to use something else. Also, snaps are really bad at cluttering anything related to disk usage or block devices, things like that. So if I normally run LSBLK, you're going to get a result like this. You can see my petitions. Everything is what you'd expect it to be. With something like snap set up, you're going to start seeing a ton of loop devices. This is how Snap manages metadata for a lot of these applications. Now, good applications like LSBLK, DF, Mount all have ways to filter out certain pieces of information. But I, for one, would prefer that these just didn't exist. Speaking of clutter, like many applications out there, it doesn't respect your XDG directories and makes a folder inside of your home directory. But to be fair, it's no worse than what Firefox is doing as well. Now, I mentioned IoT and servers at the start, but initially when snaps were created, they weren't created for the desktop use case. That sort of came later after Flatpak showed up. Flatpaks from the ground up were made for the desktop use case. And technology can be repurposed and modified and all of that fun stuff, but some people see this as sort of like a hack or a bodge solution rather than something intended for desktop use. Another thing is like any other containerized solution, snaps don't always play nicely with your system theme and some applications might look really, really strange. Now these things can be worked around and over time slowly get better and better, but this problem happened with flat packs as well and is probably going to happen with any other solutions that come in the future. And depending on how well an application is managed, you might see some weird folder issues or some permission issues. Things like the default folder not being your home folder, but instead being the location of the snap. Or maybe you're trying to use a joystick for a game as a snap, and the joystick permission is just not enabled. Granted, like a lot of the other problems, these aren't snap-specific issues and can happen with flat packs as well. Now, all of that stuff has been for the general user, but there are some developer-specific issues as well. Things like how it is yet another packaging system. Sure, it's technically platform-independent, and you can use it on systems that are not Ubuntu, but so are a bunch of others, and if you're going to be using Snaps, you might as well be using this one and that one and that one and that one, and over time, all you're doing is managing packages and not making any applications. With that being said, though, a lot of distros which are embracing a containerized solution are embracing flat packs. So flat packs are being seen as sort of this community project where the community controls where this is going, with Snaps being this corporate project backed entirely by Canonical. That may not be totally accurate, but it is the idea which is starting to form. Snaps were not invented here, they were made over by Canonical for Ubuntu. But we're over here doing our community thing, and we want nothing to do with that. Also, by using Snaps like any other containerized solution, a lot of the issues you start dealing with aren't related to the application itself, they're a byproduct of your containerized solution. So it might be a problem with maybe how theming works in Snaps or how permissions work or something like this. 
and not a problem specifically with the code that you wrote. But this can happen with native packages, my favorite example being OBS on Arch Linux, where I don't know if it's still not fixed, but for the longest time, there was no browser feature built into OBS, so you couldn't do things like embedding your chat. But this wasn't a problem with OBS, it was a problem with the way the Arch team packaged OBS. In the end though, I still stand by the fact that snaps aren't inherently bad. But hopefully now you know why a lot of people out there don't like snaps, so when they say they think they are bad, you have some level of understanding about why that might be the case but they might have a completely separate reason, which I didn't cover here. Now, I want to give credit where credit is due. A lot of these points are based on points brought up by Alan Pope in a reply to a thread about why there is so much negativity towards snaps. I will leave this comment in the description down below, and I recommend you actually go and read it, and read a lot of the replies to it as well. There was a really long thread going over a lot of these points, and I feel like in many ways it's fairly informative. But anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you like snaps? Do you hate snaps? Do you think some of these reasons why some people don't like snaps are actually positive. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to your only bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.